Archbishop Fulton Sheen said that truth never appeals to us unless it is personal. And that's what this channel is about, looking at the truths of the Catholic faith and seeing how can they change our life? How can they affect our life? How can they help us live in union with Jesus? So today we're going to look at Blessed Anna Maria Tiigi and two ways that she can help us grow in union with Jesus. And then the first way is a question for you. Have you ever had a bad experience going to confession? Maybe the priest reacted negatively and it was a negative experience for you. I have to say that that's pretty rare. I've never experienced that, but I know some people who have. I think Blessed Anna Maria Tiigi can help in this area. And secondly, do you need a deeper conversion? And I think we can all relate to that. I know I do. So we're going to look at a chapter of her life that highlights these two areas of her life so that when we go and ask her intercession, our faith will be increased because we'll grow in appreciation for how she grew through these two areas. Now, this is the second video of our series on Blessed Anna Maria Tiigi. If you missed the first one, I'll link at the end of this video. Now, let's look at her life. Growing up as a child, she lived in a Catholic home in Rome. She went to Mass every day early in the morning with her parents, and she frequented the Sacrament of Confession. And then as she grew later in life, she continued to grow in her Catholic faith. She had a prayer life. She continued to go to daily Mass. She would go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation frequently. And she started to become aware of sins in her life that she wanted to uproot. And she was her confessor advised her later on in life at around 18 years old that she should maybe consider getting married. So she prayed about that and asked God to send her a, a young man that would be suitable for her to grow in a holy life. So obviously, faith was important to her. She met a young man named Domenico and they took their relationship to God in prayer to see if they should get married and they did. So by all accounts, when you would look at her life from the outside looking in, you would think Anna Maria was a pretty faithful woman. But when you look at her life, everything that I've described is all considered pre-conversion. <laughs> and when I started studying her life and this was pre-conversion life. I mean, that's my life. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to go to Mass regularly. I frequent conf confession regularly. I have a regular prayer life. So did Blessed Anna Maria Tiigi, but this is considered pre-conversion for her. What was the issue? Well, she was aware of a sin in her life that was stealing her peace, stealing intimacy with Christ. And what was that big sin? It was vanity. She liked to dress up and wear nice things. She liked to wear necklaces. She liked to look good. And some might consider that sin trivial. But there's no such thing as a trivial sin when it comes to our relationship with God. Every sin is an infinite offense compared to His goodness. And so she was aware of this in her life. She was trying to uproot it. Uh, it seemed like she had half resolutions. She would go to God, ask her his forgiveness, try to amend her life, but she seemed always to fall back. She was dressed with all the taste and care which her humble circumstances permitted. Nevertheless, her heart was ill at ease. She knew it was not well with him and was secretly conscious that all this vanity, trifling as it may seem, was displeasing to God. So one day she's walking in Rome towards St. Peter's Square. She's holding the arm of her husband and jostling amongst the crowd. And as she's walking towards the square, she bumps into a priest. Now the two didn't know each other. And it was just a casual bump and she kept on going. But when the priest bumped into her, he heard the voice of God in his heart saying, Observe that woman. I shall place her in your hands. You will labor at her conversion, and she will sanctify herself, for I have chosen her and have called her to be a saint. After passing this priest, Anna Maria continued her way to St. Peter's Basilica, and upon entering, she was given a grace of repentance, and she prayed with her whole heart that God would help her turn from sin, and she found the confession and went in. And kneeling before the priest, she said, Father, behold a poor sinner at your feet. 
And as she began to say her confession, presumably confessing her vanity, the priest responded harshly, hardly allowing her to finish her confession, and then hastily gave her absolution, saying, Go, you're not one of my penitents. Other accounts say that she wasn't even able to finish her confession. In any case, it was not a consoling experience for Anna Maria, and she laughed a little bit saddened and disheartened. But she was not discouraged. Later, she found herself going to the church of San Marcelo, and she entered in and saw a long line for confession and thought to herself, that priest must be a good confessor. So she got in line. And finally, when, when it was her turn to go to confession, she knelt down. And it happened to be the same priest that she had bumped into on her way to St. Peter's Square. And this priest immediately recognized her and said to her, Ah, you are come at last, soul dear to heaven. Courage, my daughter. The Lord loves you and desires to have you all for himself. These words were greatly consoling to Blessed Anna Maria. and She made a good confession, bearing her entire soul to the priest and was touched by the mercy of God. And so here we have Blessed Anna Maria Teiji overcoming, number one, a negative experience in the sacrament of reconciliation. If you've ever experienced having that in your life, you can ask her intercession to give you the strength and courage to go back to the sacrament of reconciliation. I would just add another point. Don't let somebody else's sin keep you from the mercy of God. And so if you've had a negative experience with this sacrament, I encourage you, I just find another priest. <laughs> and number two, don't let the good life steal from you the great life. What I mean by this is don't settle simply for the devout life of just going through the motions of Catholicism. Seek the road of perfection. Seek deep intimacy with Jesus. Perhaps your heart, like mine, needs a deeper conversion. So what can we do? We can ask Blessed Anna Maria Teiji's intercession to obtain for us the grace of this conversion. So friends, thank you so much for watching. Share with me below what stood out to you and why. If you haven't watched the first video from the series, it's gonna be linked at the end of this video, and we'll see you soon. God bless you.